بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and sisters Islam Welcome back to the second day of a beautiful first emotional day Wallahi I can't tell you how proud I am to be part of this group that you've invited to the beautiful country of yours which is called Trini Wallahi I can tell you that this is indeed a very unique conference like no other I'll explain that inshallah in the second lecture. But today the topic is the marriage workshop. This poor slave of Allah is actually one of the instructors for Al Kawthar Institute. And there's a course that I teach. It's called the Home Sweet Home. It's all about family from A to Z. But it takes two full days. We will just work on one aspect of it today which is one of the most important, if not the most important, of that family life. It is a proactive approach to a happy family. Not reactive. So I'll be talking tonight, today, about... Some of us are still asleep and it looks kind of dark. I'll be talking today, this morning. If you're awake, raise your hand. Oh, Masha. Okay, again, I, I was just testing if this thing, see if this thing is on. It is on. Okay, how many can hear me? All right, so we'll talk about something called the four by four. The four by four factor. So the first four, I will talk to my dear sisters in Islam about what to look for in a man. The second four, I will talk about what my dear brother will look for in a sister. And the third four, I will be giving you the four steps you have to do before you say I do. And the third and the fourth four is the advice I usually give couples after they get married. Remember, I will be asking you questions this time. So be careful. And it's going to be between brothers and sisters. So don't let me down, man. Okay, in the lecture in the South, may Allah bless them, very generous indeed. We talked about parenting. And we said the first haqq. The first right for your child is choosing your spouse. Before your child is even born, they have the haqq, the right upon you for choosing the father or choosing the mother. The seed and the land and the tree that we talked about previously, slightly, last night. So let us go into the four. So, my dear sister, from another mister, if you look for a brother from another mother, what should you be looking for? Most of the time, I go to the sisters, when they ask, you know, my husband is doing this, my husband is doing that, he's not good to me, and, and, and. You know what the first question I ask the sisters? Based on what, Ukhti? Based on what did you say I do to this man? That's what it is. If they tell me, oh yes, he looked like uh, Fabio, the six pack and the uh, thing, where's the beach? <sighs> and the hair is flying. Oh, did you see the way? Oh, did you see this? All that stuff. I go, subhanallah, ukhti. Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula mentioned things in the Quran and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned things in the sunnah to tell you here is what you look for in the man and given your criteria and a field to look for. Now, if you neglect that and you choose to disregard the commands of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we pay the price and it's a simple formula indeed. If you heed to it, you'll be happy in this life and hereafter. If you don't, you pay the price. It's a very simple formula. So let's go through the four by four, inshallah. The first thing, Ukhti, I'll be telling you about the four criteria you look for in a man. However, when I talk to the sisters about the four criteria in the man, what am I, lock, what am I talking to you for, Akhi? 
I am talking to you indirectly to be that four criteria in the man. So I'm talking to the sisters to look for the four criteria in the man, and I'm asking you indirectly to be or obtain the four characteristics that I will be talking to the sisters. Similarly, when I talk to you about the four criteria you look for in the sister, I'm talking indirectly to the sisters to obtain the four characteristics that are mentioned in the hadith for the man to look for in a wife. So please listen with your hearts. We are going to take our pride and arrogance and leave it outside these doors. We are going to submit to what Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi'ula said in the Quran and the sunnah of the authenticated hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is our uswa, he is our leader. And wa ma yantiqu an al-hawa in huwa illa wahyu yuha. He does not speak of his own whims and desires. It's a revelation bestowed upon him. So the first thing is a four criteria for a man that you look for. There are two mentioned in the Quran and two mentioned in the Sunnah. The first two that are mentioned in the Quran, Ya Abad istajir inna khayra man istajart al qawiy al amin ahsanti ukhti al qawiy al amin. So the two things you look for first, ukhti, in the Quran that is mentioned, O oh my father, hire him. That is the daughter of Shuaib. When Musa alayhi salam came and she saw how trustworthy he was and how strong he was, she talked to her father, Oh father, hire him, meaning she's interested in marrying him. Indeed, the best of those who you hire, Al Qawi, meaning strong, Al Amin, meaning trustworthy. So Al Qawi, according to Al Tabari, Qawiyul Iman. However, the recent scholar says Qawi in everything, which means financially, physically, mentally, intellectually, academically, of course, and religiously. Every aspect of life, he should be strong. Al المؤمن القوي خير من المؤمن ضعيف وفي كل خير. A strong believer is better than a weak believer, but they're all good. They're both good. But however, that the first thing, أختي. But I'm not asking for the man that benches 300 and squats 700. I don't mean that. I understand that you may be looking for a man that will carry you. You know, you've been watching these Bollywood movies, right? The guy has a a flower in their teeth. And the hair is flying and the sun is setting and the birds are flying again. And the guy kicks the door open and the carrying is... I'm not asking for that. This is slightly different. I'm talking about Quwiyyid Iman, the strength of Iman. That is the, according to Tabari, and that's the stronger opinion. However, strong in everything is very important, inshallah. That's the first criteria you should be looking for. The second thing is trustworthy. I mean, why? Because you really are going to be under... That his guardianship, Ukhti. They are like hostages. You understand that when you submit, you're basically your father, when he puts his hand in the, your future's husband's hand, he's transferring the imara. He's actually transferring the guardianship. He says, I looked after my daughter, you're now you're looking after her. So you're trusting your life with this man. I'm going to ask you one thing. If this man is going to take you to heaven or hell, he ask you a question. Is he trustworthy enough with you to see if that, if there's a cold night, which is, I can't believe that happens in Trinity, but imagine if there's a cold night and the window is open, will he not be amin enough to close the window or cover you at least? How could he not be able to close or want to close the gates of hellfire? Or how, how could he open the gate of hellfire? What I mean by that, if the sister is muhajjab, I says, you know what, take off the hijab. Show something, tighten this, shorten that. That is not an Amin brother. And especially if he comes talk to you before and behind your father's back. And you know what? You know, my intention is good. And I can tell you, and I don't mean anything. Wallahi, don't get me wrong. But remember, Ukhti, before you get married to this man, you will know whether he's Amin or not. For example, you know, at nighttime he's talking to you, right? Hey baby, how you doing? <laughs> what are you wearing tomorrow? Because I want to match because we are a couple now. You know, you look so blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, the door opens. You hear it in the background as the brother is talking. And it's his father. Luke, I'm your father. And all of a sudden, that brother is talking to you about, hey, baby, how you doing? And blah, 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 blah. He says, yes, brother Abdullah, I will talk about tafsir halaqa tonight in the masjid, inshallah. 
Who are you kidding, man? That's not a mean. So you understand, Ukhti, you have already some flags you raise. This brother is beaut. You come to that gate, not the balcony. It's, we don't have this uh, uh, Rapunzel, throw down your hair. We don't have that stuff. We have Quran and Sunnah. You come knock on the door, you ask for my hand in marriage through my father accordingly and so on. It's a very big topic, but I will try to my best to stick to the four by four inshallah. Now you understand also how to measure the Amin. You understand the brother will come to you and says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah khayna. He's speaking really nicely and all that. You know my intention is very clear and all of the stuff. And as soon as you look away, what does the brother do? He checks you out upside down, right? I mean, he's walking all over the place. It's not Amin. Khainatul a'yun. I understand there's ru'ya shari'ya in her father's presence, ya He <laughs> you has to have a mahram so shaitan doesn't go far. And I know what I'm talking about. Wallahi, people come to my office and say, listen, my daughter is pregnant from... Uh, Wallahi, because we let loose. You can go ahead. So when you see a brother walking around the street and says, uh, Mubarak, alhamdulillah, you, you, you married? No. Uh, your sister? No. Your mother? No. <laughs> My fiance. Yalahwe. <laughs> Wallahi, ya Shaykh. I don't know what to tell you. We have, we left the Quran and Sunnah and we've taken tradition over Islam. We've taken the hand me down Islam. So we have to go back to Quran and Sunnah and find out the I true identity, inshallah. Because prevention is better than cure, Ukhti. Remember. Ukhti, it is very important for you because this is your future. This is a seed for that children that you will bear. The uswa, the role model that you will have. So we talked about first and second, inshallah, in the Quran. The second, in the hadith. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, in ja'akum man tardawna khuluqu wa deenu, or another narration, deenu wa khuluqu, taqdeem and taakhir, both. Fankihu, in lam tafa'alu takun fitna wa fasadun fil ardu mubin. When a person comes to ask for your hand, daughter's hand in marriage, he has to have two criteria: Swiss bank account and Mercedes Benz. Yeah? No? You're right. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu didn't say that. He said two criteria is khuluq and deen, or deen and khuluq. Both narrations are okay, inshallah. Religious background and moral conduct, behavior, ethics. You know why? Let's go to the Quran. You know when Aisha radiallahu anha hadith al ifk, that great fitna, when somebody accused Aisha radiallahu anha of doing something, when she was emotional, she couldn't even remember the name, not Yaqub, Shu'ayb, Yaqub alayhi salam. When she says, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانَ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ By Allah, I will only say, be, be beautiful, patience, and not, don't complain to anybody else except to Allah. She couldn't remember the name of a Prophet of Allah That's how she was. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, رِفْقًا بِالْقَوَارِيرَ According to the hadith. So you have to have moral conduct, behavior. You have to be sensitive with women, ya akhi. They're an emotional bag. You are physically based. They are emotionally based. So a man that doesn't know how to deal with you, Ukhti, in sensitive way, understand who you are. You are as a gift of Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula, as I talked about briefly yesterday. And remember, the word ummah comes from the word um, as we mentioned before. So you're it. According to Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, what did he say? He says, women are half of the ummah. And they give birth to the other half of the ummah. So they are the whole ummah. Do you understand, Akhi? The gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, as I mentioned yesterday. So if he doesn't have that sensitivity, Ukhti, so you have to make sure that he has the khuluq, the moral conduct. And the khuluq, by the way, is the fruit of the ibadah. And that's why they're linked together. Khuluq and deen, religious background. So let me go through this quickly, inshallah. Please understand that Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula links the ibadah with the akhlaq. He links the acts of worship with the moral conduct. Let's go through them quickly, inshallah. Inna salata 
تنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر indeed the salah prayers that is the act of worship that is the ibadah the fruit of the ibadah is tanha عن الفحشاء والمنكر words of evil and transgression act so the fruit of the ibadah is akhlaq do you understand how important akhlaq is akhi it is sufficient for us to know that the akhlaq is the heaviest thing on the scale who wants to be close to rasulullah sallallahu in jannah ya salam if you want that, أخي أختي, he told you who will be next to him and he will be more beloved to the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa If that is not a sufficient of reward of the akhlaq, I don't know what else is. You would give anything up just to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in a ru'ya, in a vision. But could you imagine on judgment day, he says, come sit next to me. You are most beloved to me. You're closest to me, to my heart. You know who said that is? Do you know who is the Ahabbakum Ulay? Waqrabakum Ilay? On Judgment Day, closest and most beloved to, to me amongst you on Judgment Day. He says, Ahsanakum Akhlaqa. The one that has the khuluq, the best of the moral conduct. That should be your reward, inshallah. Ukhti, that's what you should be looking for. So we established already that the fruit of the ibadah is the akhlaq. Through the salah, inna salata tanha an al fahshai wal mukar. Second, Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula, when he says, Khud min amwalihim sadaqa. Why? Take from the wealth a sadaqa. In that narration, a stronger opinion is zakah. Why? Tutahiruhum. What to zakihim? Purify them from the illness of the heart, from the greed. You should be generous. Jawad. Give more than you take. It is a test of your faith. A sadaqa burhan. Yes? Sadaqa comes from sidq of iman, the truthful of your iman. It is proof of your iman. That's what it is. Again, the ibadah is zakah. The, the akhlaq is that, moral conduct is the fruit of that. Let's go to the Ramadan, we just finished. Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala al-ladhina man qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. So again, the ibadah is siyam, the fruit of the siyam is taqwa, it's khuluq. To be conscious of Allah. Again, I'm not gonna go into details. And then, the fourth, al-hajj ashru ma'lumat. Those who want to go to Hajj, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُزُوكُ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ You know, who's been to Hajj? Raise your hand if you've been to Hajj before. MashaAllah, may Allah accept and may Allah grant those who haven't been to Hajj a trip, an invitation to go to Hajj. Ameen. If you go to Hajj, you understand there are about 4 million people coming from all over the world and there are some people that actually have this chain. You know the human chain? Jiggy, 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 jiggy. You know they don't know them? Okay, you haven't been there. You don't know them. There are certain people that they think if I lose you, I'm losing you for life. So they lock hands and they bulldoze anybody else in front of them. And when they push you down and they step on you, they're so nice, they say dua rukub. Subhanallah sakhar lana hadha wa mukunna lahum mukhraneen. Very nice people. Now in this case, you know where you pay so much money, you promised me this, you promised me that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La Rafat, don't even start thinking of intimate relations. Wala jidal, no quarrels, no fusuq. Fasaqa kharaja an ta'atillah. Fasaqa al habba, you know the, the, the seed, when it comes out of the, that's called fusuq. It means kharaja, came out of the obedience of Allah. Very difficult. This is a test for your patience. Again, the hajj is again a fruit of the ibadah. So you understand where it is, Akhi. That's the most important. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to become the best human beings. That's why when, I, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard about a woman, كانت تعرف, you know what that means? This woman was very famous, was very famous in Medina. And Medina was the best of the best, the bedrock of Islam. But understand of you being famous in Medina, that's a major, not a minor. She was famous in Medina. By what? Doing so much acts of worship. Qiyamul Layl, Sadaqa, everything, fasting. But the end of the hadith said what? Walakin kana tu'zi jiraniha. She used to harm her neighbor. What did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Did he say it is okay because she used to do Qiyamul Layl? She used to do all this stuff? No. He says, La khayra fiha hiya fin nar. There is no good in her. She's in the hellfire. Why? She did not get the fruit of the ibadah. Neglected to understand what the ibadah, this act of worship is all about. If you don't walk the talk, akhi, is hypocrisy. You understand that some of us are Abu Bakr in the masjid, Abu Jahl at home. 
Similarly, Akhi. So she didn't get the fruit of the ibad, and that's why Prophet says there's no good in her. She just did some aerobics. Atabta nafsak. That's it, you made yourself hungry and thirsty and tired, sleepless. And that is the four by four, the first one for the sisters. I'm hoping, Ukhti, you understand what to look for. Now, go to the brothers. So I talk to you indirectly when I talk to the sisters about the four things the sisters should be looking for in the man. I'm hoping you were taking notes that you should obtain these characteristics that you should be that man. Now I'll talk to you what to look for in a sister. And usually when I say the hadith and most of the brothers know this one. Especially when I go to universities and I talk to the youth. I says, do you know the hadith? He says, of course I know the hadith. Who do you think you are, man? I know the hadith. What are you talking about? I knew the stuff before you were even born. I was born. Wait, what? I, what? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Do you know the hadith? She says, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Tell me what's the hadith. She says, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, Tunkah al mar li arba. A woman should be wed for four criteria. Uh huh. I'm listening. Give me the four, please. All right. Li jamaliha. Uh huh. Li jamaliha means her beauty. Okay. Second, she says, uh, Li jamaliha. Uh huh. I got that. I got that. Number three. Li jamaliha. Man, my man, I heard you a lie. I heard you the first time. What's number four? Lijamaliha, of course. Got you covered. Anything else? No, no. That's all I want. Lijamaliha. 36, 24, 36. I feel my heart is aching. My knees are shaking. It's true, I ain't faking. She doesn't eat bacon. If that's your criteria because she doesn't eat bacon, dude, you're way off the bat. Because there's three more on top of Lijamaliha. Yes, Islam is a practical religion. She wants you to have a beautiful wife. But to qaddar bi qadariha. The beauty is in the eye of the holder. You understand? Everybody looks, has a different criteria. But according to Sheikh Abdulhim Green, most of the brothers want, uh, what's her name? Uh, Fox, something. Megan Fox in a hijab, right? That's what most of the brothers want. That's, I want that. I want that. Yeah. But what do you look like, man? <laughs> the same brother that wants Megan Fox in a hijab looks like this. Wake up and smell the hummus, man. Okay. So let's have compatibility now, right? The kafu. So the first thing is true. Jamali has there because God help you. I know that Tiran and dad is, a, is may Allah bless the brothers. Who's single? Raise your hand if you're single. Masha Allah. All right. Can I ask for one thing? If you're single, stand up, please. If you're single, stand up. I know I, it's a trick. I know, I know, I know. If you're single, stand up, please, if you don't mind. The brothers are, are, uh, are afraid. They're afraid. Stand up and stay there. Stay, it's good. So is this a trick question, man? Sisters, there are 100% halal meat. We are going to auction them off. <laughs> MashaAllah, you can have a seat now, John. <laughs> and the, the, I tell you, I tell you, the brothers always complain. I want to get married, man. Dude, they're not short. They're there. Wallahi, and this is why I want to get married. They're there. But where is the missing link? We'll talk about it in the end, inshallah. We'll give you some roadmap to follow. We can't just leave you hanging. We'll, we'll give you the points, inshallah. So now we talked about the Jamalia because I understand when you go downtown or the beaches, or, just disregard that. If you see some, uh, don't think about it. If you see some, <laughs> you, you know, they usually say if you dig a hole, the first rule is uh, stop digging. And I'm really digging a bigger hole here. So all I'm, all I'm asking you to do now is just, uh, Im I was going to say imagine. No, don't imagine. <laughs> you understand, if you see sisters in humanity walking around in wearing, or not wearing, and you're a human being. In Muslim Ahmad, if you see something outside, go to your wife. We're human beings. We're not asking you to walk blindfolded. But you understand, of course, that Islam gives you that right. So if you see things outside and then you go home and you look at your... Uh, mm -hmm. 
you will say, I should have listened to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Something that will please your eye, that will testify that. Content. Yes, alhamdulillah, I have a beautiful wife. To me, right? Everyone should look at his wife as the most beautiful wife, most beautiful woman on the face of the earth. Because my wife is here, you understand? <laughs> but we, between us, you know, we, we have like... Most of the brothers have this fantasy of four wives thingy, right? But I don't do politics, so I'm just gonna move on, inshallah. The first thing we said, li jamaliha, the proof is there. Khalas. Yes, li maliha, wealth, like Khadija radiallahu anha, right? Had the wealth to aid. As a matter of fact, if a woman helps her, her husband in a financial, it's not an obligation, she gets double the reward of sadaqah. Beautiful. So she's not owned, she's not up for the highest bidder. Third, nasab. You know, the lineage, the family. The hadith is da'if. I have to mention before I say this, the hadith is da'if. So we're just going to say it's been narrated, it's been heard, it's been said. The, the narration is da'if, weak. But it is the fruit of the understanding of what it means. إِيَّاكُمْ وَخَضْرَاءِ الدِّمَنْ His woe to you وَخَضْرَاءِ الدِّمَنْ They asked him, what is خَضْرَاءِ الدِّمَنْ? He says, الْمَرْءَ الْحَسْنَاءِ فِي الْمَنْبَةِ السُّوءِ Beautiful, but the foundation is very bad. So you have to understand that they, it has, they have to come from the lineage that is mentioned in the hadith that is sahih. It has to be strong because you know what kind of environment you was raised in. Who brought this person up? Is there a righteous father, righteous mother? And that's the lineage you're looking for. Because the lineage ongoing. And if you don't believe it, go to Surah Al-Kahf. وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا their forefathers were righteous. You know, the, the tafsir says in the seventh sabi' jad, in the seventh grandfather. That's how far they go back. Yes, akhi. Make sure they come from a righteous lineage. Now, the fourth, he says, wadiniha. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu did not stop here with her religious background. He says, فَذْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ yadak." He said, the true winning of the one that you look for, the true successful choice, is the one that has the religious background. He is فَذْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَاك تَرِبَتْ يَدَاك has two meanings. Which means your hand will touch dust. The positive meaning, the dust meaning, the, 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 the beautiful tree that we talked about, that is sustenance, that's a blessing. And the other one, otherwise you will lose everything if he doesn't have the religious background. Now I'm going to give you a visual. Please make sure you never forget it. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the first thing and the most important thing of the sister you look for is religious background. So we are going to put this up. Religious background is deen is number one. Remember that. Deen is number one. Repeat after me. Deen is number one. I hope you remember that. Don't lose it when she sees the googly eyes. Oh. Dean is number one. All right. Dean is right there. Number one. Don't forget it. Now she's also beautiful. MashaAllah. I want you to add a zero. She's a 10. Now she's also rich. Add another zero. That's 100%, man. Now she also comes from a good family. Righteous upbringing. Add another zero. She's batting a thousand. Now take away the Dean. What do you got? You got three zeros. Enjoy. And that's what happens most of the time. But when I hear, according to Shaykh Al-Qattan, Hafizahullah, he says, but when I ask the brothers, what do you look for? What do you look for in a sister, man? He says, أريدها بيضاء طويلة شعرها كالحرير وتغرد كالبلابل وسحرها سحر بابل كانت غنية ثم افتقرت ففيها عز الغنى وذل الفقر إذا رأيتها من بعيد فكانت جميلة وإن قريب فإنها أجمل إنها تعطف على الصغار وتكلم الجار ولا تضار بالجار You know what that means? What do you want my man? Says, I want her to be tall and white She has different beauty during the day and different beauty during the night Beautiful silky hair not crooked she was rich and it became poor. Now she has the honor, Andy, of the honorable of being rich and wealthy. She also has the humility of being 
poor. If you see her from afar, she's beautiful. If you see her from near, she's even more beautiful. She has different color during the day, different color during the night. And she is kind to the neighbor. She respects the elder, but gentle with the young. I go, who? What are you looking for? What? Where do you get where do you find this girl? You know what he said? If wallahi, if we find this woman, la bayanaha al khilafa. If you find this woman, we would have the pledge of allegiance that you become Amir al-Mu'mineen. You lead this ummah. But where do you find this woman? In Jannah, inshaAllah. Now, the sisters have the same thing. Mission stick. It's called the building of dreams. Right, Ukhti? On the first floor of this building, it says, uh, here is a man that wants to get married. Oh, a man. Cool. I go on the first floor. Just before I go into the door on the first floor, next to the elevator, says a sign that says second floor, there's a good looking guy that wants to get married. Good looking. That's nice. So I take the elevator, go to the second floor. Just before I enter the door, it says on the third floor, there's a good looking rich man that wants to get married. Oh, bling bling, ching ching. I get some. I go on the third floor. On the third floor, just before I go in, it says the sign says fourth floor. There's a rich, good-looking, sensitive, <gasps> sensitive. I thought all the sensitive guys were just, just happy to be sensitive. <laughs> like uh, Mufti Mink, Habibullah, uh, last night goes. The guys go now. Oh no, please don't be silly. So now she sees rich, good-looking, sensitive. Allahu Akbar. She goes on the board. And that goes up there. She goes, a good-looking, sensitive, rich man that wants to have kids. <gasps> and on and on for the last, last floor. It says, this floor is designated to prove that women will always look for something better and will not be content for what they're looking for. They don't exist. Or you want that long list and you want that long list. Allah help us. Wallahi. So why don't we stick to the list of the Quran and Sunnah? You'll be happy, inshallah. Tayyip. Now the four by four, first four, second four. And remember, Ukhti, I was talking to you indirectly. Please be among those. Now, Akhi, remember when, when he says, do not marry. I've told you what to marry. Do not marry. Which one? He says, Al-Ghadub, Al-Qatub, Al-Lafut, Al-Hannana, Al-Annana, Al-Mannana. Al-Ghadub, the one that Kathrat Al-Ghadab, she gets angry quick. Al-Qatub, you know 111? Al-Lafut, she compares you with everybody else. She looks at you and she looks at this guy. <gasps> Bolding, you got the biryani belly now. And she's looking at this guy. <clears throat> Where's the beef? <clears throat> she compares you. That's why in Genesis, Qasarat al tarf they don't see except nobody else except you. Al-Hannana, Tahunnu liman qablik. She actually has feelings for somebody else behind you. But of course, when you first meet her, what do you do? Um, you're the, my first. Yeah. When you have uh, the lunch with her, you know, with a mahram, of course, you get to know. What are you having for, uh, for dinner or lunch? I'm just going to have a salad. <gasps> Mashallah, that means she's going to be stupid. And what are you going to have for drink? Just water. Kaching. And after you marry her, what happens? Pizza, chocolate, chips, what happened? What happened to my wife? <laughs> so things will change. Just another lecture on its own, inshallah. So you understand. Hanana, Anana. Every time complains about certain things. Of course, not these sisters. These sisters are the best, right, sisters? You the best. You the girl. Feel your pain, I know. Because the brothers are pointing on it. My wife is here, man. She got it, got it short. Okay. Al manana tamunu alayka bin ni'ma. If it wasn't for me, my father didn't do this. I did this for you. I did this for you. Don't do it. So I'm sure now we learn a lot. Let's go to the third. The third four. Four by four. 
Now, alhamdulillah, you have now found the criteria you look for. Before I leave you, I have to tell you Al-Hajj Al-Asqalani, Rahmatullahi Ali, Fath Al-Bari, Sharh Al-Bukhari. He mentioned something that's very important according to this hadith. He says, even though Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the number one on his list is a religious background, he said, make sure before you ask about her religion background, take a look at what she looks like. Otherwise, you're refusing the deen, not the looks. Let me explain. Even though the most important thing for us is the religious background. Because the brothers come to you, what do you want for, what do you look for, Akhi? Just a girl, and you know what, Muhajiba, Qiyam, Layl, Khaf, that's all I want. Okay, then we get your girl with this. And then you know what, on, on uh, the wedding day, you don't see anything else, and you take a look at this. <laughs> so listen, man, it's a sunnah, ya Akhi. Wallahi, it's a hadith, the narration of the hadith is there. You look at something that pleases you. Yeah? So he says, make sure that it pleases you at least. No repellent, it's not that. Then then if that she like, if you like what you see, then ask, does she have the religious background? Yes, continue. But if you say yes, she has the, the religious background and you don't like what you see, you're gonna say no, but you said no to the religion, not that. You understand, Akhi? So please make sure you do your homework properly. Now you got it, the criteria are there. The third four by four is simply called istishara, istikhara, azman tawakkul. Istishara, istikhara, azman tawakkul. Istishara is you consult. You consult with everybody else. You make sure that they have their, the, the, you ask the neighbors, you ask the school they went to, they ask the job that they, they had, they ask the friends, they ask the, if they traveled with somebody, they ask if they dealt money with somebody. If everybody's telling you two thumbs up, you move on to the second one. If everybody's telling you two thumbs down, you don't even go to the second stage. So let's pretend that everybody's telling you fantastic. These people, the repetition is good. They do everything else according to the criteria they have what it takes. You go to number two, which is istikhara. Istikhara, by the way, I, you know a lot of misconception. People think that you have to do it for seven days and you have to see something in a dream. Not true. There's not one single narration that is authenticated that you have to do it for seven days or you have to see something in a dream. However, let's go through it quickly, inshallah. Istikhara, who has hist in Muslim? If you have hist in Muslim, raise your hand. MashaAllah. Tayyip, if you don't have hist in Muslim, you have to make tawbah and buy hist in Muslim, inshallah. And if you have a smartphone, if you, raise your hand if you have a smartphone. All right, if you have a smartphone and you don't have Hasan Muslim downloaded, you need to make another tawbah and download the app, inshallah, it's free. The dua al-istikhara is there, page 81, on that black uh, version. If you don't know it, just ask Allah, Ya Rabbi, choose what's best for me. However, it is narrated that you prayed two rak'at. By the way, it is not authentic to say that you have to do it قُلْ يَا يُلْكَافِرُونَ after Al-Fatiha on the first waqa and قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدَ فَتَ فَتَ But the scholars say it's the most sincere, ikhlas. So you recite قُلْ يَا يُلْكَافِرُونَ after the Fatiha, if the first waqa and قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدَ after the second waqa. After you finish, you raise your hand, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala اللَّهُمَّ إِنَّ اسْتَخِيرَكُ وَعِلْمُ قَسْتَطُرَ بِقُدْرَتِكَ you say the dua, but by the way, it is not multiple because the hadith says في أمري هذا singular. So you make us dua istikhara, istikhara for a single person. Yeah, طيب. Now after you make istikhara, continue. But remember, everybody's telling you good. You go to the second one. If everybody says bad, you don't go even the second phase. That's it, done deal. Now after you make istikhara, you will see signs. Things will get easier or better. Continue. That's a clear sign. Or things will get worse or more difficult. For example, you will have a fight. Or every time you see this girl, you have a flat tire, a broken windshield. You try to get some uh, money from the, from the bank in order for you to reserve the, uh, the, the, the banquet hall. You're, uh, you're overdrawn. You borrow money, you go to the banquet hall, it's booked for life. That's a sign. Run, run, Forrest, run. <laughs> Jump ship, Mayday. Houston, we have a problem. Down. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Now, if things are getting better and easier, everything is fantastic, khalas, continue with it, inshallah. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the closet sins, knows what is hidden, and knows what's in the future. Nobody else does that except Allah. That's why you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi ula. Tayyip. Now, if that's the case, Number three is Azm. I am determined to follow this sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed me. And a warning, severe warning from the scholars. If you go against the istikhara, 
because you're asking Allah to choose what's best and then you say, Ya Allah, I know that you chose this, I'm not going to take it. As if you're making a mockery of Allah. You said you would pay a big price in this life and the year after. Please don't go against the signs of that istikhara because your whims and limbs and desires. Number four, tawakkul. Ida azamt, fatawakkal ala Allah. If you're, you're, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're determined because Allah will never let you down. So this is the third four by four. The fourth four by four. Congratulations, you've been promoted. You're married now. So I will give you the advice that I usually give in the nikah sermon. The first thing is called the boat theory. You're in the same boat now. The I, I captain goes out the door. It is we, it's us. This boat is marriage in this ocean called life. In this life, there's high winds and high waves. It's tests and fitting. Rest assured there's no smooth sailing here. Not even Rasulullah had smooth sailing. So please expect that. But your job as a captain and a co-captain to work together. Do not compete against one another, but complete one another. To navigate this boat of marriage in this life of ocean, in this journey, have a great life under the umbrella of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. So my advice to you, Akhi, if you have a GPS, again, punch in Jannah. You'll find Quran and Sunnah to guide you to Jannah. Inshallah. Number two, the thread theory. Marriage is a fragile thread. You hold one end, she holds the other. If you both pull at the same time, it will break. So when your wife pulls, and she will, it's just a matter of time. You let go. Why? Because you the man. Who's the man? You the man. Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, the strongest amongst us is whom? I believe Shaykh Umar Sulaiman Hafidullah mentioned that. It's not by sarah, it's not by the strength and you beat somebody and wrestle. No. He's the strongest of one, the one that controls his anger. At the rage of the time of anger. Control yourself. You own it. Malaka. Otherwise he says that shaitan actually has the position over you, not you. Who was there last night when you saw that when we were confrontational, then sat, then separated? Right? Remember that? MashaAllah. Beautiful. Now, if your wife comes up to you and says, I heard this from, I can't remember the sheikh. He says, your wife says, you know what? If you're a man, divorce me. Shaitan comes and goes, what? A man? Who's the man? The man just told me, you the man. You the, I'm the man. Who the man? I'm the man. All right, you divorce. You go. You go, girl. Now you're happy? No, Allah. If the woman comes and actually says, listen, I want you to divorce me. I hate you. I divorce me. What, what are you going to do? Okay, be honest. Israel, what do you think? If, a, if your wife comes up to you and says, listen, divorce me, you ugly, uh, uh, whatever, all that stuff, I'm just going to keep it a family show, inshallah. She calls you names and blah, 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 and all that stuff. Divorce me. And she starts to beat you like this. That's how, that's how they fight. What are you going to say? You know what you're going to say? He says, honey, I can't live without you. It's a high fly ball. It's a hole in one. You have to understand, inshallah. And that's how you do it. Number four. Something called, actually it's number three. Something called the castle theory. In every castle, how many kings are there in every castle, Ukhti? Only one sister raised her finger, this is one. But the other sister said, let me think about it. Okay, have you met my lawyer? Can I call a friend? Yes, she's absolutely right. In every castle, there's only one king, Ukhti, not two. And in every castle, how many queens are there, man? Only one brother again. He's thinking, is your wife over there, man? Are you afraid? He's afraid. هذا توحيد الخائفين. This monotheism of the fire one of the three. He's right. So, 
All I'm asking you to be, Ukhti, is be the queen of the castle, a first class lady, and never try to be a second class man. You be the king, Akhi. You take responsibility at the helm of the well being of that responsibility of the family. The proof is in Surah Taha. When Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ala was talking about Fazalahuma, Fakrajahuma, Mimma, Kana, Fi, everything in dual tense, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve. But when he held one person accountable, Allah subhanahu wa jalla says, Wa asa Adam Urabahu Fagawa. Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala held Adam accountable for it. Of course, the Kulun Ra'iya. Everybody's responsible for their, their their fields. So all I'm asking you to be Akhi, be the man. And uh, if there's a queen, I don't want to hear about it, man. There's just one queen, dude. That's it. Number four, the computer theory. You understand? If I give you a computer and I don't tell you how to use it, and I will ask you a question, how do you like your computer? So I'm frustrated. Take it back. I'll take it back. So please take a course of how to use the computer. I will give you the same computer. And I will ask you the same question. How do you like your computer? You will say, I can't live without it. What's the difference? You understood the language of the computer. So there are six secrets. It's according to Fahm and Nafsiyat, understanding the lingo between the two genders. Six secrets you have to know. But that's again another lecture. One day, inshallah. Let me give you one example and I finish with this, inshallah, because the time is, is coming too close. Now you understand that men are physically based, the women are emotionally based. What is number one on her list, Akhi? Is, uh, okay, fair enough. Nobody knows, but that's fine. Number one on her list is love. What's number one on his list, Ukhti? Nobody knows. That's fantastic. We'll, we'll, we'll come. Actually, respect, believe it or not. MashaAllah, you got it? MashaAllah, fantastic. Maybe one day, inshallah, we'll come and teach this course. Bismillah. Well, don't worry. We're working on it to bring the Al-Kawthar here, inshallah. Now, imagine we use that left side of the brain and you use that right side of the brain. Emotional, fantasy, all that stuff, color, coordination, decision-making, numbers, and all that stuff. Very difficult for us to articulate our feelings through verbal means. You want this, I will make you honey, you're the best thing ever to be, and the flowers, and uh, you blossom, and blah, blah, blah. even beauty pales next to you. This flower, you are the most pleased, blah, blah, blah. As soon as you say that, the girls go, ah. But these brothers here, including this person of Allah, very difficult to do, to do this, because what do we do, brothers? Um, I, 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 la, 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 la. We can't say the words I So what do we do? We buy her a gift. Here you go. Okay? So you understand now, Ukhti? So when the man gives you a gift, when you usually when the man, when the woman asks you a question, usually some questions like the you know the deadliest question is what? What are you thinking? You know why we, 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 because we're thinking of nothing. <laughs> but you can't tell her that because she'll think you're an idiot. <laughs> and remember, there are certain questions you have to be very careful. I've read this before. It's really good. I want to share with you. If she says, who are your most favorite three women in your life? You have to say you, your shadow and your reflection. And you're allowed to lie to each other. You know that it's in Hadith Sahih Muslim. I don't mean the wrong way, the right way. Like for example, does this dress make me look fat? You're in trouble, dude. You should see a red flag. Woo, woo, woo. Mayday. Now you're right. And if you say, but honey, I don't think the dress has anything to do with it. Thanks for playing. Nice for that. A man died last night. Details at 11. You're allowed to say, it's true. Say, you know, honey, I love your cooking. You're allowed to say, I love my mother-in-law.
You're allowed to say, you know, the receding hairlines look, make you look more intellectual, honey. That biryani billy of yours is a great time where I put my coffee mug on them. It's a beautiful thing. Look how beautiful Islam is. You're allowed to like to make each other love each other and come. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase the love inshallah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who listen to speech and follow the best of it. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make your homes a home sweet home and to meet in Jannah inshallah. And some of the sisters, do I have to be with him in Jannah? <laughs> I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who dwell in Jannah and laugh as we laughed in this year and after inshallah. Zakum Allah khayyan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.